Now, Roma Wines present... Suspense. Tonight, The Bluebeard of the Lock, starring Merle Oberon. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you... Suspense! This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, who tonight from Hollywood bring you a star, Miss Merle Oberon, and a suspense play inspired by an actual recent news item from occupied France. And so with the blue beard of Belloc, and with the performance of Merle Oberon, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Get back there. Stand back there. Back off the wall. All of you, come on. This time. One. They found most of him. A man? It was a soldier, a German. I heard it was an officer. Stay back. Back there, all of you. Uh, But they're they're still digging? Yes. What officer was it, did they say? They think it was Captain Muller. You know the doctor? They think. They don't know. They're looking for his head. One. Two. Three. Oh, it's an announcement about this. Of course, they found the body, identify the body. Why don't they identify him? Identify him? The bluebeard. Why don't they find out who he is? Listen, listen. Achtung, achtung, villages of Belac, Saint Jean, Bralognon, Frimé, achtung. This morning's victim of the bluebeard of Belac is identified as Captain Franz Müller. Medical officer attached to the staff of Colonel Strelitz. Oh, no, no, and for the first time, the bluebird himself has been seen, and a description has been provided. He is described as being of medium height, broad shouldered, heavy set. Monsieur, His Monsieur, hair please. is dark brown to yes. black. When seen I must speak with Colonel Strelitz. Is he here? I have information. Information about what? About the bluebeard. Is the Colonel here? He's in the staff car over there. Please take me to him. I must see him. And who are you? Cecile Combre, Madame Combre. I live on the road to Flomé, just outside the village. Well, all right, come along, madame. Is that the colonel sitting in the back of the car? Yes, wait here. I'll see. Oberst Strelitz, Corporal Brecht. Corporal? Herr Oberst, da ist eine Frau vom Dorf hier. Eine Madame uh, Combre. Die hat angeblich Informationen über den Blaubart. <laughs> ja. Naja. Wahrscheinlich hier so ein hysterisches Frauenzimmer, ja, Oberst. <lacht> Was können wir noch machen? Sie haben eine Möglichkeit. Wo ist sie? Da drüben, Herr Oberst. Ich habe ihr gesagt, sie soll wachen. In Ordnung. So herkommen. Jawohl, Herr Oberst. The Colonel will see you, Madam. Oh, thank you. Das ist Madame Combray, Herr Oberst. Madame, this is my aide, Lieutenant Kreutzer. It was... It was kind of you to let me speak with you, monsieur. Kind? Naturally, madame. When we were told you have information about the bluebird. Yes, I have. We can't overlook anything. Now that he's killed one of my own officers. I know, I know. And I, I am next. So? The bluebeard mm-hmm. is going to kill me. He's going to kill me tonight unless you help me. Unless you come home with me and stop him. This is your information? Yes. Why, every woman in Belak believes she's next on the Bluebeard's list. But I know. Madame, the Colonel's time is valuable. We thought you had real information. You don't expect us simply because you hysterically believe... No, no, that please. You... I know, Colonel Strelitz. How can you know? Because, monsieur... Because the Bluebeard is... Is my husband. Why? Your husband? Dr. Pierre Combray. Yes. He's the man you're looking for. I... I've known it for a long time. He is the Bluebeard. Tonight, for suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Miss Merle Oberon, 
whom you've heard in the prologue to The Blue Beard of Bella by Sylvia Richards. Tonight's tale of suspense. <laughs> In many foreign lands, wherever wine connoisseurs gather, they enthusiastically praise the distinguished character of Roma wines. Such praise of Roma wines in foreign lands can only mean that they are truly magnificent in quality. Roma wine's excellence is due to a unique combination of California's perfect soil and climate, from whence come the choice Roma wine grapes, plus age-old winemaking skill and modern knowledge. These combine to make Roma constant in quality, uniformly fine, unexcelled in value. Tomorrow, discover for yourself the delightful Roma taste and goodness, enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. Simply serve as an appetizer before dinner a cool glass of golden, nut-like Roma California sherry. Then on the table, place a bottle of cool, hearty Roma Burgundy. You'll be pleasantly surprised at the extra delight it adds to your meal, how it will win you compliments from family or guests. Yet, the cost is only pennies a glass full. Get Roma wines tomorrow. If your dealer is temporarily out of Roma, please try again soon. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma wines. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Miss Merle Oberon as Madame Cécile Combre in The Blue Beard of Belloc, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Eleven o'clock. He'll be here in an hour. And if you had not come here with me... You have nothing to fear, madame. The house is well guarded. But won't the guards frighten him away? Their instructions are to let him through. They will come in only when we have him trapped. And we are armed. Yes, and he does not carry a gun. You know, he uses a knife. Madame Combre, why didn't you come to us before, if you knew your husband was a blue beard? First, I wasn't sure... Then, when I was sure, well, he was still my husband. Then why now? Because now he will kill me, and I'm afraid. I knew when he went away with the body of Captain Muller yesterday. Oh, well, you saw the captain? Yes, I saw it. And when Pierre looked at me, I knew he'd kill me tonight. Yes, he may try. It's been weeks of fear, and the night, the endless nights. Have you been married long, madame? Long? No. Less than a year. You you aren't French, are you? No, no, I'm English. I spent a summer in Flomay about four years ago, and I, I liked it, so I stayed. I taught English in the village school there. And Dr. Combray? About a year ago, there was an epidemic in Flomay, and he, Pierre, came there to help. He seemed to me when I met him to be very kind, a very noble man. Of course, I didn't know him well, but when he asked me to marry him, I was very happy. The morning after we were married, he brought me here to Belac to this house which has been his family's for many generations. It was a beautiful morning, early spring. We came, as you did tonight, up the hill past the summer house to the front door. Well, here it is, Madame Combray. <laughs> Come, I'll carry you over the threshold. Oh, careful, Pierre. Don't drop me. No chance of that. Now, this is the hall... But shall I carry you on from room to room? Oh, Pierre, no. Put me down. Very well. Uh, come this way. Now, here is the parlor. Oh. Hello, Captain Muller. Good morning, Doctor. I've been waiting. I hope you don't mind. They said you'd be back this morning, the people down the road. Yes, I was held up by my wedding. Your wedding? Oh, I'm sorry. Cecile, this is Captain Muller, the medical officer in charge with Colonel Strelitz. Captain, my wife, Cecile. How do you do, Herr Muller? Well, doctor, I congratulate you. I see even an epidemic can be used for. That's one way of looking at it. So what's up, Muller? What? Uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted you to come in tomorrow to help with the vaccinations. About 150 are going out and we need help. The last lot carried typhoid. I'll be glad to have what time. Well, they're leaving at noon now. Uh, if you're there at 8 o'clock, we'll have enough time. I'll be there. Very well, Doctor. Madame, tomorrow then. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Now, we go on with our tour. Follow me. Pierre, who's to be vaccinated tomorrow? All labor draftees being sent to Germany. This is the kitchen. The stairs go up from here. What's upstairs? Well, off that first landing, there are several bedrooms, mine and others, and on the floor above, still more. Before the war, there were servants. And this is a pantry? Yes. And this door? Where is it? It's locked. What is it? Oh, that, that is an old wine cellar. It's uh, not used. A cellar? Do you have a key? Let's... There's nothing down there, Cecile, that would interest you. But I'd like to see. We might be able to grow mushrooms. Uh, no, Cecile, or... it can't be used. Oh, let's look, Pierre. Where's the key? Cecile. Yes? That door must stay locked. But Pierre... You understand? Yes, but... But why? No matter what happens, you must never try to go down there. Never. You see, monsieur, it was a small thing. Just a, a room I must not enter. He told me the room was used for his experiments, and I believed him. I was in love. But there were other things, and they added up to... to fear... Just the taste of fear. A shadow so light, I, I, I didn't know it was there. It was first of all the gossip I heard in the village when I went to market. Good morning, Madame Cambre. You're late today. Pierre worked late last night. Is there any milk, Madame Boger? I can let you have a little a pint. Oh, well, if that's all. Uh, does the doctor work often at night? Quite often, in his laboratory. No, I could not bear a man who puttered around after dark. But it's his profession. Maybe. But I would not sleep a wink. Not with this blue beard about. No, I like a man who is steady, so I know what he's up to. Oh, how can you bear to live in that big, depressing house? Oh, but I love it. Well, you're young. I suppose it's romantic to you. It's no place for a woman to be alone. You know the first Madame Combré? She died there. Yes, Pierre told me. But I know he did everything he could. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah. It was very sudden. Typhoid can be very sudden. Yes, the certificate said typhoid. That's why her coffin was sealed. Oh. Uh, Jean! Jean, what is it? What, what, what's happened? Everyone's running. There's an announcement, madame. They know who one of them is. Eh? One? Of whom? There were three last night. One of them was a man. Three? Three? Why, the, the blue beard. He killed three in one night. Cut them to bits. Oh, how horrible. All sliced up and scattered around, Madame Cambray. You should have seen. Oh, no. Where, where were they? In the meadow north of the church. Why, that's near your house. The meadow? Yes, Madame Cambray. If you had been awake, you would have heard him. You or the doctor. <laughs> Yes, if I'd been awake, I would have heard. And one night, I was awake. My husband and I had gone to bed early, and I slept well. I'd worked in the garden most of the afternoon. Shortly after 11, something, some sound woke me. It may have been only an owl screech. I lay in the dark and listened. I didn't hear it again. Then I heard another sound. And I saw it was a little moonlight that my husband was out of bed and that he was dressing. Pierre. Oh, did I wake you? Pierre, what is it? Nothing, Cecile. Go back to sleep. Is, is someone ill? Did someone come for you? I've got to go out. Go back to sleep, Cecile. I won't be long. Something woke me. I, I, I heard a sound. I'm sorry. Did someone come for you? Was it Captain Muller? No. Who was it, Pierre? Who's ill? No one you know. Where are you going, Pierre? Do you have to go far? Go back to sleep. I won't be long. But, Pierre... I'm sorry I woke you. But you didn't. I'm sure I heard... Cecile, it's best that you go back to sleep. I just wondered... It's best for you. Good night, Cecile. Good 
He went away, Colonel Strelitz. And I lay there in my bed, rigid, listening to his steps down the dark stairs into this kitchen. I heard the front door open and close. Then he went down the gravel path in the moonlight. I waited. It seemed long, yet it was only a little time. That clock there, I could hear it through the floor. Chime the quarter, then the half. When I heard him, it was not yet midnight, and he came slowly, climbing up the hill. I slipped out of bed and went down the stairs to the landing there, from where I could watch him come into the kitchen. But when he came into the kitchen, I could not speak, for he was not alone. Over his shoulders, he carried a body. A man, I think. And he was stooped under his horrible burden. He crossed the kitchen without looking up and did not hear what I was sure he must hear. The pounding of my heart. He took a key from his pocket, holding the body with one hand, unlocked that door to the wine cellar and went into its awful blackness. Then I was back in my room. I don't remember how I got there, cold and shaking in my bed. When I heard... Oh, monsieur... It was pitiful. I heard rising from the depths of the house, from where he had gone, the scream of a man in fearful agony. Cecile? Yes. Yes, Pierre? You are still awake. No, Pierre, I... I told you to go back to sleep. I was. I was, Pierre. I did. But you are awake now. Something. I heard something. Yes, you heard? It must have been you opening the door. Oh. You came in suddenly. You must have. Yes, I think I did. Well, we'll go back to sleep now. Yes. Yes, we'll go to sleep. Pierre. Yes. Was someone ill? Yes. Who was it, Pierre? Did you have to go far? We'll go to sleep now, Cecile. What? What time is it? Time? It's just... Past midnight. Midnight was usually the hour, his hour. He always came back soon after. And the following day, there were always the announcements on the loudspeakers in the village. Bodies. Pieces of bodies. There was the day when your men found Odette. It was so horrible for me because she was so beautiful and still only a child. You remember... But it was yet warm. So the whistles were blown, calling all the village to the church square. Because the bluebeard might still carry his knife or have blood on him. Or he might not get there and be known because he was missing. I was in the village and I ran to the square with the mayor. And we stood in line with the others. Everyone was there. Everyone. Except Pierre. What terror I felt, monsieur, when you began to call the names. Felix Armand. Yeah. Paul Arden. Here. Yvette Barthelmy. Madame Combray, are you here? here? It's, it's just the sun. Madame it's so warm. Here? I feel chill. Oh, you're very pale. Here. Why, I don't see Pierre. Here, here. He's probably with Captain Muller. He'll be here. Pierre Combray. Pierre. Here, here, here. I'm here. Pierre. Don't look at me like that. You'll attract notice. You're out of breath. Where were you, Pierre? Does it matter? I'm here. But your hands, your clothes, they're wet. So you see, I still did not know. And I needed to be sure. I could not live unless I was sure. So I stole the key. The key to the cellar. Yes, it was that easy while he slept. And the next day, he went to the village with Captain Muller and left me alone with the answer in my hand. I opened the door and went down those steps, carrying a candle. We will go down there in a moment, Colonel Strelitz, to wait for him, and you will see. There is a little room, bare and damp. By the candle's light, I saw there was something on the table. It was his case, filled with knives, surgical instruments. Not strange for a doctor... There was blood on them, fresh blood. And there was more on the table, on the floor, and much blood on a sheet which I found thrown into the corner. I found the strength to get out and to lock the door again. I put the key back that night. So again, I did not know. I did not really know until yesterday. 
and sewing in the front parlor. And Pierre was walking up and down because he had an appointment with Captain Muller. The captain was late. Seven. What's keeping Muller? Perhaps he got orders. More soldiers came into Belac yesterday. Many more. Yes, I know. But that shouldn't keep him. There's something going on. They're getting ready for something. Yes, but why would Muller... Oh, do sit down, Pierre. Your walking makes me nervous. I've spoiled the seam and have to rip it out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Some of the soldiers were searching houses yesterday. I don't know what they were looking for. Did they come here? Oh, no. At least, not while I was here. I was in the village most of the afternoon. That's when I saw the soldiers. And there's nothing here to look for. Is there, Pierre? That's it. Of course. Why didn't I think he's down there? Pierre... Pierre, where are you going? I'm going down to this cellar, Cecile. I have work. Pierre, no. Not the captain. Yes, the captain. And Cecile, I don't want to be disturbed. Then I knew he was going to kill Captain Merlin. He was going to kill a German soldier. Worse than officer. I knew then, Colonel Strelitz, that if he would go that far, he was no longer a man I could even attempt to reason with. His insane urge to kill might turn on anyone, even me. I had to stop him. Ah! Cecile! Cecile, what are you doing? I told you not to come down here. You... you killed him. Cecile, now I'll have to... But I wasn't ready. It's not time. Captain Miller, they'll track you down. You you can't get away. Be quiet. I warned you. I told you not to. Murder. You did it. You killed him and the others. Cecile, I told you, for your own sake, for both of us. What will you do now? Do? What do you think I'll have to do? And now, you know too. And in a few minutes, he'll come. And then it will be over. It's almost midnight. That's a remarkable story, madame. So he made no attempt to harm you last night. No, Colonel Strelitz. It wasn't time. Not time? He kills only when he feels the need. And he'd already killed one, so the need was gone. And it was daylight. He left then? Yes. I haven't seen him since. He looked at me. It was a terrible look. And he went. And I knew by the look that I would be next. Tonight. And Captain Miller? He... He took the captain's body with him. Come. We must go down to the cellar now, before midnight. Very well. Lieutenant, will you bring the lamp? Yes, sir, bring it. You see, it's unlocked as he left it. Close the door behind you, Colonel. Very well. Careful, the last step. And then another door. Oh, it is small and damp. Is is that the table? Where he... Yes. Set the lamp there, Lieutenant. You can see the stairs. They they are quite dry by now. Uh Uh-huh, I see. On the floor... Sit down, monsieur. There, where you can watch the door. I... I will stand here at the back, if you don't mind. You're right. It's safest for you. Listen. I heard the clock strike. And... Yes. Listen. It's the door. Have you your guns? Shh, quiet. Yes, but we want to take him alive. You can. He's coming down. Stacy. Are you there? Put your hands up, Dr. Hombre. Ah, visitors. Well done, Cecile. Scarcely visitors, Doctor. Bit more unpleasant for you. Now, if you will... Put your hands up, Colonel Strelitz. You too, Lieutenant. Oh, Madame Hombre. Yes, I too had a gun. But but your husband, he... He's the bluebeard. I'll take your gun, Colonel, and yours. No, Colonel, I am no Bluebeard, as you knew very well. 
It was clever of you to plant the mutilated bodies of your victims to drive me into the open. To create this legend of a blue beard to make the people of Balak suspect all men who work at night as I do. To make the village distrust me, their leader. But Madame Combray, you saw Captain Miller, saw his body. The captain, yes. Pierre killed Captain Miller. He was his one victim. Because the captain was suspicious and pried a little too far into this room. Pierre had to kill him because he saw our radio station behind that wall. Open it, Pierre, and let the colonel see. You see, the wall opens easily, and behind it the nerve center for Belak, for our underground army. Army? Sneaks and cowards who set their women to lying. I lied? What else? You said that he carried in a body... That there was a scream in the night, that there was a body. All true, Colonel. Yes, I carried home a man wounded by your soldiers, and I removed the bullet without anesthesia, for we French have no such luxuries. So the blood of that patriot is mixed on the table with that of the late Captain Muller. Don't you know it's hopeless for you? Hopeless? Colonel, surely you know there are armies in France, Americans, English, and our underground army which surrounds you. But this house is surrounded by my men. It was, you mean, Colonel. Yes. Are you still there, Mr. Porter? Porter? Yeah, what do you say, Doc? Everything quiet? Quiet as a tomb, Doc. Our thing's down there. Who is that? We have what you call a couple of rats, Mr. Porter. Then we are finished. Okay. That is Mr. Porter. As you heard, he is an American. Uh, An American? Here? He is commanding a large number of parachutists who just an hour ago dropped into our meadow and who a few minutes ago very quietly killed the guards you mentioned. Killed? My God. Yes, and since you were here in the cellar, unfortunately, you could not hear. But now, Pierre, you have your work to finish. Your work? I have orders from my army to kill you and the lieutenant to secure this advance for our allies. So with Cecile's help, I set this little trap. Listen to me. You won't... Cecile, do you want to share the honor? No. No, I... I, I, For France? Yes. Oh! It is an honor. And so closes The Blue Beard of Belloc, starring Merle Oberon. Tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Have you discovered how much good wine adds to the enjoyment of food? How Roma wine makes even the simplest, most inexpensive meals really exciting events? Well, all you need do is place on the table with the meal a cool bottle of hearty Roma California Burgundy. Serve it in any kind of glass. You will find it delicious with any food. And if you are entertaining guests, you will find Roma wine just the gracious, festive note that makes any dinner party or get-together a happy, compliment-arousing occasion. And remember, Roma wines cost you only pennies a glassful, so any home can afford the pleasure they add to everyday living to entertaining. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Merle Oberon is soon to be seen in the Columbia Technicolor production, A Song to Remember. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Mr. Gene Kelly as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.